Hey guys, so the Kia Sorento is here in Malaysia. Now, if most people ask me, what's the best six-seater out there I can buy? I think always the Kia Sorento slash um, you know, Hyundai Santa Fe is my favorite pick out over there. But the new Sorento is here. It's priced at 250000 for the diesel variant, which is my favorite variant. Is it still you know, value for money? Let's find out more in this review over here. Now, before I start, I just want to say that you know, I'm a bit biased because my family has been using this car for a while and I absolutely love it, right? So let's see that if that still stays as one of my favorite um, car to recommend uh, for a six-seater SUV, right? Let's go. Hey guys, before the video starts, I want to give a big shout out to my sponsor, Expel Malaysia. I believe in keeping my car looking the best because it makes me feel great and it inspires me to drive it more often. To do so, I use Expel's Ultimate Plus paint protection films and Expel's Prime window tints on my cars. I recently drove my new M2 competition 2000 km to Thailand and back and I had zero stone chips because of the PPF and I felt super comfortable and confident all the time because Expel's Prime Window Tins blocks out the hot sun and UV radiation as well. Now if you're looking for the best protection for your car and yourself, check out Expel's Malaysia's page and visit their newest headquarters in PJ. I'll drop the link in the description below for more information. With that, please enjoy this video. Now, um, let's do a little walk around on the exterior first because it looks good, doesn't it? It looks really, really nice for the... It looks premium, right? Some of you may know that maybe like two decades ago, Kia wasn't placed, doesn't have that kind of look, but look at it today. It's really, really nice. So let's look at the front. There is this, um, instead of a very sharp, um, squarey front, it's just kind of rounded in front over here. And uh, as I'm exploring this, I noticed the bonnet sort of starts like this in, on top of it. It's like a, there's a bit of an illusion of a clamshell, but it's not, you know, but I think that's pretty, pretty, pretty cool, actually. Oh, by the way, before I continue, this is the 2.2 diesel variant, which is the, um, they say, the highest spec, but for me, it's the only one to get <laughs> because if you have a car this heavy, you might as well go for a diesel. Uh, I believe the car is like 1.7 or 1.8 ton. And if you're running a naturally aspirated 2.5, I think it's not really sufficient, not really economical. I think better go for a higher top engine like the 2.2 diesel. And um, we'll talk more about the engine later on, right? Um, as for wheels, uh, we have the 19-inch. They fit with the uh, Goodyear Eagle F1 SUV tires, which are really, really good. Um, I've driven this one on the Santa Fe. Great tires, quiet, lots of grip, and comfortable, right? On to the side profile. Um, no, SUVs used to be seen as a big, squarey, you know, very boxy, very utility kind of feeling. Um, modern SUVs have gone into a more pedestrian, more something that fits the city. And the Sorento does it extremely well, I believe. But what I really like about this design is the, this floating roof looking design. And it's because of how they uh, face off the window into this panel over here. There's actually a panel here and here, but because it's black, it looks as though there is no pillars over here. And that makes the car look longer, um, makes the car look less utilitarian and more like something you feel that's on the road. Way to go. I think it's a really, really nice design. Yeah. And um, just by looking at the right height and everything right now, the car doesn't feel that tall either. And, it, and I think some people, they don't want to get too big of a car because they feel it's very intimidating to drive something so big. But it doesn't feel that big. It feels actually really, really acceptable. But, you know, it's still a decent height, lah, right? Let's go on to the rear. Now, this is my favorite part of the car, this angle over here, right? Oh, it looks good. So the lights... Sort of remind me of a little bit of like a Cadillac kind of feeling, you know, the two little square things. I'll put the pictures where you can see that. Uh, but it's a lot of, the front is really soft, right? Down there is a bit ganas, but here, the rear, it feels really muscular. A lot of square, a lot of heft, you know? And uh, I just love all these little shapes pointing here and there and there. Yeah, yeah, just really, really cool. And if you look at this angle over here, it kind of darts down. So as I was, Exploring the car from the side, right? You can, I really saw this thing came out. It's like, whew. yeah, 
rather than just a flat down. Right? Uh, exhaust pipes, they don't show it anymore, they hide it. It's somewhere, probably nah, down there, it's all pointed downwards. You know? Now we have this uh, you know, um, fake looking exhaust nowadays. But it's okay. It's okay, it looks cool. And uh, tell me what you think about this wording over here. This uh, Sorento. I think it looks a little bit like there's a German. There's a German that does it like this. But it's okay. You know? <laughs> I think it looks cool. It looks cool, right? Let's see if we can get this boot open up. So um, you have automatic um, tailgate. And uh, the access, of course, is easy. It's also automated closing as well, and locking as you expect from a premium SUV, right? Just look at the space. It's actually quite deep. But because of uh, the rear seats, it's not as deep, right? It's a bit more shallow, right? And down there, you have also the spare wheel. So um, you have to compromise a bit on the boot space. So it's not the largest, but I think it's large enough, right? So let's uh, put this down. Wow, I really like the, the, they use this brushed aluminium look, feel, finish. I don't think it's brushed aluminium, but this is metallic finish. It's really, really nice. Ah, yeah, you're so good. Look at this. Ah. If I ever have a family, I'll, I'll get this, I'll get a car like this. <laughs> All right, let's uh, explore the interior a bit from the rear space. So the, there's uh, three variants of uh, the Sorento. You have the uh, 2.5. Um, two-wheel drive, or front-wheel drive, which is you know, two-wheel drive. You have the all-wheel drive, okay? And then you have the 2.2 diesel, okay? The, the lower spec is a seven-seater, the two-wheel drive. And then you go for the all-wheel drive petrol, it's a six-seater, so as this one over here, All right? So let's get in and explore the rear seats. Come, yeah. The rear seats are... Now, this is something different. I'm more familiar with... Um, the, the, you know, the Santa Fe Sorento being it a seven-seater. So with the removal of this seat, I somehow, this is just my, my point of view, I somehow feel like it's, I don't know, it feels better with a seven-seater. It feels more complete. It feels more premium with all of that. With the removal of the middle seat, my personal preference is not that great. Lah. But I get it. It's for easy access to the rear. And nowadays, um, not a lot of people sit on this seat over here anyways. So getting in and out, the ingress egress for the rear seat is actually way easier if you have uh, six seaters, lah, right? But compared to the Kia Carnival, it's really like, you know. Yeah, but uh, seats, really comfortable. Um, you have your individual arm rest over here. You can rest both your arms over here, so it allows you to really relax in the journey. Small things like this matter, right? Um, let's go and look at the rear space before you go into the details. Actually, it's not too bad over here, all right? Um, there are cup holders that you can put your phone over here. You have USB socket, so your kids behind here can be, you know, can be entertained. Lah. Let me see if I can move the seats. Oh, I can't, lah. yeah. This is as far as the seat will go. I think if I was an adult, it wouldn't be very comfortable here if I do a three-hour journey. But if I was a kid, um, yeah, actually it's okay. Lah. So not advisable to ferry adults over here. But one thing I like about the rear seat is you have rear aircon control. This is so important, all right? Instead of saying, Mommy, Daddy, can you turn off the, the, the aircon? You know, it's really hot over here. No, you can do it over here, all right? Okay. And I can even undo the seats over here. You can do this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Bobby. <laughs> but you can... Wow! Okay. So we arrive at destination. So rather than, than, you know, daddy and mommy trying to get the kids off the car, you just tell the kids to get off the car. They do it themselves. And, and if, if they're not strong, it's okay. They press one button. And then, I can climb out of my car. Whoa! That's a cool touch in this car over here. Right? So, hence again, six-seater family car, it's a rental. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's get into the front seat. I'll jump over there. 
Okay. Let's check out the interior. Kia has very round steering wheel. <laughs> That's something I always notice. It's extremely round. It just, just looks really, really round. But, uh, you know, everything that you expect, you know, you have uh, media over here, you have your car controls over here, you have um, um, cruise control, you have lane departure, you know, all, all those things. So, um, the 2.5 uh, all-wheel drive petrol and the 2.2 diesel has the full shebang of... Uh, the safety system and so on and so forth, the other system, everything, right? Um, and also, the higher spec has the nicer um, dials, it's digital, etc. The other one is um, analog, but it's a bit smaller as well. Um, but the fit and finish is really nice. It does now feel very conti, which is another reason why I like Kia. Yeah, the fit and finish is so good, right? And I like this new accent over here. See this, like little, you know, um, uh, textures across the car really elevates it so this time they have the the infotainment system pushed out inside here uh, I haven't operated it so I don't know how it looks like but we can find out later on but again ergonomics is uh, very acceptable you got a very deep dish here to put your deep I mean very deep you know um, place here, I don't know what you call it. I'm just so excited anyways. <laughs> to put in your phones, you got you got USB cables, you got charging cables, uh, you have Qi um, wireless charging, which is great. Um, then your, your handbrake, handbrake operation is here, no longer the handbrake, handbrake itself. Uh, and I believe you have drive modes on the 2.2 2 and the 2.5 all-wheel drive, but the, but the other one, the, the front-wheel drive doesn't have this. I believe. Okay. Okay. Enough space over here. But yeah, it's just really, really nice. Yeah. Let's see if we can take this car on the test drive. The other thing I like about Sorrento is that you have this over here as well. So you can operate this if you're chauffeuring somebody so they can have better leg space behind there as well. But yeah, overall, it's a uh, really, I mean, it's it's nice. You know, everything is. Uh, Better than I expect, actually. The, the fit and finish is really nice. The plastics and everything. So nice. So, doesn't... Okay, down here only got scratchy, but up here is like... Wow, feels nice. Feels nice and solid. So yeah, uh, overall impressions of exterior, interior. Um, I love the new exterior. Love the rear. Uh, I love that new motorized function with the, 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 the middle seats. Uh, just makes things much easier. Okay, let's see if we can get it on the test drive. Hey guys, so we are here to start our test drive, right? So as we're pulling off, everything feels rather familiar. The 2.2 diesel is a great engine. And uh, but first, I'm quite captivated by the the oh, the dials. It, it feels well, it feels like um, a bit works out good, <laughs> But it's a good thing. It's actually a good thing. I I think they've really upped their game in uh, the interior side. So let's uh, discover how the car rides and how the car drives. So something interesting in this model is that we're running a 2.2 diesel, but it has the um, dual clutch gearbox, which is new. Hmm. Oh, okay. Thought it's... By the way, thanks Bobby for holding our camera and Jess here as well. If you're looking for Kia, you can just drop by and look for Jess, right? I, I, I know, I know, yeah. Only, uh, I uh, asked uh, before that, uh, Bobby already helped me. Thank you. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> too, too much skills cannot. Ah, uh, no, uh, 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 <laughs> Okay, so, um, yeah, so we have the dual clutch gearbox, which is new. Um, normally, and even the, the current Santa Fe offered in Malaysia, it's running the 8 speed gearbox torque converter. So yeah, this is something interesting. So now we're in comfort mode. We have eco, sport, and uh, smart mode. I believe smart mode is the one that learns how you're driving and then adapts to your driving. Am I right? But it, so smart mode is like uh, all of it, but either, uh, try to trying to predict when you will be yes, yes. doing either one. So, hmm. Okay. Well, let's put it in smart mode and see how it works. Okay. Now one thing about the Sorento is that the driving. 
uh, actually feels quite like a sedan. Uh, we turn left here, alright. Right tire. It feels quite like a sedan. Oh, look at that! When you put your signal, look at that! Look at the camera. Yeah, we're discovering the car as we go. By the way, yeah, and you put the left signal. Boom! There you go. Whoa! This is so cool. Yeah. Uh, I think Honda has it over here, but sometimes you have to pull your eyes away from uh, the you no know, from the dash just to see that. And I find that well, it's really smart, but it kind of distracts you. But here is within your peripheral vision, right in front of you. So I love this. This is super smart. Um, okay, uh, back to the driving position and everything. The the format of the car, the way it's built. What I really like about this is that it feels like a sedan. It doesn't feel like a hefty big SUV right and as you drive right now and just like the previous models it looks big but as you're driving it it doesn't feel big and uh, just like Bobby said in his introduction of his video the carnival always have this really big kind of feeling you know um, and sometimes it may put some people off from purchasing the, the carnival less it's less intimidating more welcoming to just use it on a daily basis so Hyundai has, uh, sorry, the Hyundai Kia has the 2.2 diesel for quite a long time, the CRDI. Uh, it's my favorite engine among its range. When they first got that diesel, right? Some people say diesels are unrefined and they're not, uh, you know, they're, they're just you know, not, not nice to use, right? But it's not the case anymore, right? I remember the first diesel being like, the, the turbo boost will kick in and stuff like that. Gone. All that is gone. It's seamless. And now I'm getting the sense that dual clutch gearbox is actually really refined as well. It doesn't feel jerky. I'm not feeling any jerk at all. So I'm slowing down to almost a full stop and I'm just throttling off. It doesn't feel... There's no hesitancy on that. It's pretty smart, right? Great gearbox so far, right? Now the 2.2 diesel, why I like it is because again, the car is heavy. Wow. Oh, see, we have a blind spot alert as well. Uh, the car is pretty heavy, 1.7 tons, and you load people in, it's close to 1.8 tons. Uh, the additional torque just really helps you uh, get the car going. All right? Wow, much more refined. Yeah, the, the dual clutch gearbox works in this car. I was a bit skeptical at first, but it makes sense. All right? See the car brakes in front. I think it's informing me that right side, ah. Okay. And off to one of the things I love about the Sorento a lot is the way it rides. Um, the way the suspension is built, the way the chassis and suspension built feels very continental. It's very like, it, it's, it doesn't feel floaty. It's the kind of like, it's like a nice planted feeling, right? The roll is very, very predictable. There's no bouncy up and down and so on and so forth. Uh, um, that is one of the other reasons why I love this car, it feels comfortable as a passenger, it feels assuring as uh, the driver. Uh, steering, very light, electronic nowadays, they're really light, very easy to get your car moving and um, predictable. It's quite intuitive, you know where you're placing your car as you go. I want to share a bit about the engine, which I, I like. Um, the other thing I like about the engine is that it's extremely reliable. Um, this engine block itself um, from my family had uh, three generations. We had the Inokom Santa Fe, we had the Sorento, and we had the, the current gen Santa Fe as well. Um, this engine block is really, really reliable. And to, to make my case in point, uh, what happened was the first Santa Fe, we ran like 350 plus thousand kilometers, right? And uh, we, we lent this car to a friend, and the friend's driver didn't notice uh, it was overheating. So the coolant actually leaked into the engine. It was just a mess. It was just really, really bad. Like, because imagine the coolant in the engine. And the car was still being driven around. Right? Uh, turn right or? Go in there. Yeah? Right. And the car was being driven around. And then, you know, we had to you know, do an overhaul. Uh, just a top overhaul. We changed the valves. The car just continued. Nothing. Nothing wrong. The auxiliary parts, the pipes, everything, they held out very, very well. So... Um, the actual engine itself, right? Um, if if they, it, it didn't have the overheating, it will still continue to run, no problem, right? So this whole sometimes people have this. It's a very old school thing. They say, oh, Korean engines or uh, cars are not reliable. That's rubbish. It's it's really not the case anymore at this point. Turn left, right. Put the signal. Take a look. 
go cars, and then we just pull up. Let's put the foot down and let's see how power responds. Okay, it's not like sports car power, but hey, there's enough power to pull you out into the highway, right? And hence my point of getting the 2.2 diesel, right? And the 2.2 diesel is sufficient. Imagine you have less torque, I don't recommend it. I mean, the commuting in the city is fine, but sometimes you just need a little bit of power to get out into the fast lane, uh, move away uh, from you know, obstacles on the road. Yeah. Here, right? Okay. The dual clutch really works. It really works. <laughs> it's really refined. I was really skeptical and thank God it all worked well. Yeah. Damping is not um, okay, so they don't I mean this is an you know don't expect air suspension, but it's not bad either. I mean you can you felt I was going through a couple of bumps and you know little small little like indentations on the road. No problem at all. Very nicely done. The, the suspension tuning, dampers, everything is just nice. Yeah. Which is one thing that this car does a lot better than other cars in the segment, I believe, is the, is the way it rides, the, the overall feel of it. Yeah. The other thing is uh, vision in this car. Again, like, you know, all these little things, like little cutaway window parts over here, you know, um, you know the, the rear mirror not being entire, like super big, being a, a, a quite a, a, a medium to small size, really allows you to just have great visibility around the car. Can we go through? Excuse me. And one more thing. Oh, the graphics as well. Yeah, the graphics. It's really spot on. Yeah, I haven't explored how to use this, so I can't comment much about it. But at so far, the graphics, like, like this one here is really spot on. It's not too too bright, just just nice enough to indicate what's going on but not not distracting you. Okay, so I think that's pretty much as far I can get in this mini test drive. See with the top, I can just get out, no problem. Just like that. So I if I recall correctly, the uh, engine uh, the the the, the technical data, or sorry, the, the output data or power is 190 horsepower, right? And then 400, 440. Say like the carnival. Um, mm, yeah, so 440 newton meter of torque, and then 190 uh, PS, right? 190 horsepower, right? 199 horsepower, yeah. More than sufficient to, to move a car of this size around, okay? And again, those of you who, number one, you know, think that diesel is unrefined. Get in the car, you drive. I can tell you something, most of your passengers wouldn't know it's diesel or petrol. Okay. You have to be a petrol head or you used to own diesel cars to really listen closely to it. You, you, maybe you can hear the, the diesel clatter. It's very minor. You really can't hear it at all. One thing I just noticed as we're pulling back into Kia is the noise insulation of this car. It has improved compared to the previous Sorento. It, it feels quite a big jump. It feels very well damped inside here. Sure, it's it's in 250,000 range uh, for a new Kia Sorento, which is something that I was like a bit nervous, like, oh man, are they pricing too high? Um, I don't think so. After driving it, after riding it, I, I don't think so. I think it's a, it's a good ask for such a good quality, yeah feels conti, design is great, uh, with, with, with the exception of the rear seats, I feel that when you have the six seaters, I think because of the folding mechanism everything, they have to make the seats less hefty, less thick, you know, but it's a good compromise because it allows the accessibility into the, the sixth row, uh, the third row, sorry. Okay, so uh, my little test drive is done. Uh, overall, um, yeah, I'm um, again, Great gearbox, everything there has been good, remain good, and uh, a lot of things have improved. Um, sound damping, um, you know, this, you know, this, um, um, what do you call it? The, the blind spot cameras on left and right.
such a good touch such a good touch brilliant, brilliant. so uh, if you're looking to get a sorento the official horizon uh korean car lover right the sorento santa fe lover approves of this car go for it sarang heyo very good i don't know why you say korean but yeah yeah really really good car